It is Friday, people, and you know what that means. It's time for another little deck tech video. Uh, last week I teased Uro for this week, and that is what we are doing. This is my third go at making a deck tech video. Slowly getting better at it, and by better I just mean just more capable of speaking to a recording. Which sounds super sad, but here we go. Um, so, Uro is a funny little man. He's got a lot going for him, so we're going to go with the basics first. So, he's a three cost, green, blue. So, Simic shenanigans. Everyone loves Simic. We got the, we got the really fun green stuff, and then the not so fun blue stuff. And he's a six, six for three mana. Which sounds incredible, right? That's, that's literally like a toot. That's, that's beyond positive. That's a beyond positive ratio. So, for combat, super efficient. Unfortunately, Uro is a fraud. He is a combat fraud. He will steal your mana and never attack for you. And there is one big reason why. That is because on ETB, he gets sacrificed as long as you're not escaping him. And for anyone who doesn't know or remember escape, it is a mechanic to bring, some, bring a creature or spell from your graveyard to the battlefield by paying an escape cost and exiling cards from your graveyard as part of the cost. Think Underworld Breach, but just like as, on an individual basis, right? So Uro's whole thing is on ETB, if he wasn't escaped to get onto the battlefield, he gets sacrificed. The upside to this is whenever he, he enters the battlefield or in the miraculous case that he does manage to attack, you gain three and draw a card. And then you can put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. A really cool effect. Unfortunately, he gets sacrificed. So, how can we make this work? Um, the answer is uh, he's, he's he's just a combo man. He's just a combo man. He's he's the the funny combo man. That's the whole that's the whole plan. We're gonna combo we're gonna combo the hell out of him right here. So, this is the plan. All right. Step one, uh, control. That's the end of it. No. Um, so the whole plan here is, as you see on the left, counterspell. We have a lot of counterspells, a lot of control, a lot of ways to stall or prevent people from playing down their value pieces or getting their engines going while we get our own engine going. On the right, you'll see a Displacer Kitten. Displacer Kitten's a funny little thing because it really works well with our little control setup here. If you get Displacer Kitten down, then it has a really cool interaction with Uro, because when Uro ETBs, you sacrifice unless it escapes. The thing is, because that's a triggered ability, you can respond to it. So, if you have Uro ETB, and you have Displacer Kitten on the field, you can play an instant spell on the stack of that happening. After you draw a card, gain three life, and play a land card, you can play an instant spell in the stack, which will activate Displacer Kitten, have Uro recur, and then do that again. Obviously, if you don't have a way to keep that going, he will eventually reach the graveyard. But the point is, it is a not an infinite combo, but it's definitely a combo to keep in mind of, especially if you have a lot of mana at your disposal. It can be really strong. The next thing we're going to look at is our infinite combos. These are going to be our bread and butter. We got two of them. Food Chain is a little bit better in Gruul than it is in Simic because Gruul has access to both Eternal Scourge and Squee the Immortal. But we do have access to Mist Hollow Gr Griffin and Blue. And then with Ice Crown Scepter, we have access to the infamous Dramatic Reversal combo. Now, the thing with Eternal Scourge, for anyone who doesn't know, is he can be cast from Exile. So when Food Chain has you exile a creature, it gives you X plus one, X is that creature's mana value, and Eternal Scourge has a three, but you can cast from exile, which means you use Food Chain to exile Eternal Scourge or Miss Hall Griffin for their mana value plus one. You then cast them using that mana from exile, and then you just do that infinitely. You get infinite mana, literally free. As soon as you do that, you can play Uro an infinite amount of times. The funny thing is, because he gets sacrificed, he actually goes up in the command zone, which means, or you can choose to have him in the, in the command zone, I should specify. 
which means that you can just infinitely use him. Or if you want, you can just get infinite mana and then infinitely food chain Uro if you feel like it. I mean, that's always a thing, I guess. And then with Ice Chrono Scepter, you have the ability to copy an imprinted instant with mana cost two or less. And for that, we used Mac Reversal, which is a two cost blue, which untaps all your non-land permanents, which obviously is really good. Because then, as long as you have three or more mana, preferably colored, you just have infinite mana at that point. Because you can constantly tap for one, and then tap the other two, flood your mana reversal with that two, keep going. So both of these give you infinite mana, do whatever the hell you want with Uro, especially because he essentially dies on ETB. So once you get infinite mana, you essentially you have your line. Next thing we want to look at is oh well yeah i completely forgot about that my bad that's the funny combo man uh yeah but anyway sorry. next thing we're gonna look at is uh our win con now jace is basically gonna be our main win con here you could also put lab man or laboratory maniac in here if you feel the need to I really don't, mostly because the whole point is we're drawing our entire library, so we should really only need a, one or two Wincon cards. Again, because we're going to be drawing our whole library, right? So, essentially, you get infinite mana, infinite card draw. You play Jace right before you draw or from your empty library. You just win the game. It's There's not much really to go over there. It's pretty. It's, uh, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And the next thing we got to look at is recursion. Now, because we have a very self-centered combo deck with some control, admittedly, our main concern is going to be people trying to interfere with us. And this is going to come in the form of people countering our stuff, removing our stuff, all that lovely stuff. Our answer to this is a card called Time Twister, which essentially takes our graveyard and takes a graveyard, a hand, a library, puts it in a new library, draw seven. Basically, it's a, it's a reset for our library. As if we miss, let's say, we cast Jace and he gets counterspelled. Or let's say, you know, in response to Eternal Scourge getting exiled or something, someone just removes him. Although I'm not sure how that interaction will work. It's never happened to me before. Um, or say, Aro gets, I don't know, something, something, something basically happens where we cannot fulfill our combo line. That's what Time Twister is for. Only problem with Time Twister is it costs a little bit of money. So we're going to do a little something a little different, and we're going to use Temporal Cascade. Temporal Cascade does literally the same thing. Only real difference is that it costs nine to do the same thing you want instead of three. Obviously, that means it's not going to be as good, but the whole the idea is that theoretically we're going to have infinite mana anyway, so the mana difference shouldn't be a big deal. Although then again, obviously if you're in a pinch, this is going to kind of suck. But either way, it's also a nice little wheel effect. I don't know, it's cool, and it does really fit in with the whole theme of uh, you know the funny combo man. There's really not much more to go off of. It's really flexible because the whole point of Uro is control and setting up your combo. As long as you have your infinite mana and access to your infinite draw and some way to protect your stuff through counter spells or recursion, like Noxious Revival is in my personal list, um, but really you can do whatever you want. Uh, green and blue don't have a ton, but they do have a decent amount. And especially, again, through Temporal Cascade and stuff like Noxious Revival, you should have access to a little bit, plus the fact that our commander likes to really change zones a lot. That should help. But aside from that, it's pretty flexible. Um, again, you're going to want to focus on stuff that uh, helps with bouncing your stuff or maybe increasing the value of the triggered effects. You could use Roaming Throne in here if you're not confident in getting those infinite combos off. If you just want to 
have a bit of an accelerated game state. That also totally works. I could imagine using Roaming Throne with, say, Displacer Kitten or even Uro himself would be really strong. But yeah, that's that's really all I have to say about it. That's that's Uro. Simic, Simic is fun. Simic is dumb. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching another one of these. I'm starting to enjoy them more and more. And I'm not entirely sure which one I'm going to do next week. But I realized I'm starting to do a lot more combo-oriented commanders for these, even though I kind of prefer doing combat-related commanders. So next week I'm probably going to do a combat commander. I'm not entirely sure yet. But if you're interested in more combat-oriented commanders or more aggressive style decks, then keep an eye out. I'll definitely have something like that. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, see ya.